Hello YouTubers, uh, Tross here, playing some more in Finner Factory, and welcome back to my first studio apartment here. Uh, last time we had finished up resource site uh, 338.11, and uh, we had finished performance review, and uh, we're now going to move on to uh, resource site 902.42, but before we uh, actually do that, I have uh, two things to show you guys. The first is the uh, puzzle anti-javelin point defense. I had originally solved it in the video uh, with 163 cycles, 140 footprint, and 78 blocks. Uh, but I continued working on it a little bit after the end of the video, and um, I got it down to here, and then even further. Um, let's just show these off real quick. So this was my original version. Um, I believe this worked at a plus one. We moved the items together and welded them for the barrel, and the you know, base, the, the main part of the gun, and then had the uh, turret section, or rotator part come up here and use this pusher before welding it. Um, now the problem with this pusher is it's got some blocks off to the side increasing our footprint uh, as well as it you know it's using extra blocks just to push. Uh, so let's stop that. Okay this is at a plus two rate not a plus one rate but this has a plus three and a max. Now, I don't think I ever got max, but let's uh, go back to our cell here and look at my next solution here. Um, this was after some various tweaks. I think the end down here is still the same. Yeah, we still have the pushers here. Uh, so this is basically the same end here, but I made some improvements to this section. And uh, we now have the two, the barrel and I'm not sure what you call that part of the gun, but they both float up and then get welded up here before getting pushed over and come down the line. So that saves a little bit of room and I think this is a block or two further in as well. And you can see that works. And this is all running at a plus three input rate, so there's basically um, one less cycle between each of these getting done per item. Maybe it's a little more than one less cycle. Each block comes out a little quicker. So you can see these pushing over, there wouldn't be room to go all the way over because there's only three spaces between these sections here. Maybe four, but you would be really hard to get that in, but by having them both come up, they lift up and out of the way, you know, in one cycle. And then they just get welded when they both arrive here, and the next one lifts them up and they get pushed off. Let's exit to the cell and see my final version. So here we are. Oop. I don't come over as far now. And uh, basically that saves a little space here. But the... I won't say the big improvement. A better improvement is here. No more pushers. Um, so we'll look at that in a second once we finally start getting items here. I also moved the welders to the top to save footprint. Uh, they come up at the same rate now. Um, so really the welders could be eld anywhere, but because they're here, um, they also act as the blocks. So here we go. We got these lifting up and the next one comes and pushes it along and 
It gets there just in time. So we basically use the incoming block to push the further blocks along. So no more pushers, so we save some blocks there as well. Um, I believe this is also running at plus three. Uh, but because of some improvements, uh, it's a few blocks, a few cycles. Uh, six cycles faster, seven cycles faster, something like that. But it has a the lowest footprint and the lowest block score out of any of my solutions. You can see how it uh, compares to some of my friends here. Um, yeah, so the input rate was also plus three, but as you can see, yeah, it's uh, about six cycles faster overall. Um, I think it would be, would have been like ten cycles faster, like I saved a, a cycle per item, but the, the pushing of those uh, turret bases takes a little longer, so we lost like four cycles. But uh, that is uh, the anti-javelin point defense improvements that I made in uh, the behind the scenes or after the video. Uh, I do have one other thing to show, and that's in this uh, the nice chair puzzle. Last time I showed my uh, 13 block solution, which was uh, the simplest solution I could come up with in terms of fewest number of blocks. We basically make a big 2x3x3 uh, by three by three cube and then shave it down and we basically don't use any additional uh, conveyors and we just wait for them to push each other along. So this is one I came up on my own. And uh, we're just about to have actually now we're just about to have an output as soon as this there. It takes a long time but hey it's only 13 blocks. Um, now this is not the minimum footprint. You could probably move this all over here so as soon as this is built it kind of directly outputted uh, so you wouldn't have this big wide taking up lots of footprint row of chairs. Um, but this is the minimum blocks I could come up with. It is not the minimum blocks possible. Um, for that, I'm going to show it off, but I'm not going to let it solve because it's, this is not my solution. Uh, I saw this on the Infinifactory Reddit. This is uh, a solution by uh, Kanosphere, I believe his name is. I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation. Probably not. Um, so repeat, I did not come up with this. This is much more clever than I could come up with. I actually had a hard time reproducing this. Uh, the author, Kanosphere, uh, did post a video of this, or, or animated GIF, uh, but it's hard to see exactly what's going on. In particular, it took me a while to figure out that there is this uh, eviscerator here. I, I, I knew that the solution, uh, this is a 12 block solution. I knew that there was 12 blocks, but I could only see 11. Uh, you'll see this one is mostly hidden, uh, at least in the GIF. Uh, it was kind of shot like from this angle, and you'll see that this is hidden most of the time. Uh, but the way this works is it's very similar to what I had, except you got this uh, sensor here. Normally these welders are right where I had my welders. This this is a blocker, it extends, it basically pulls these welders in, but as soon as uh, the first row is done and it's pushed over here, then those are pulled back and we basically get some single blocks dropped here. Um, it's Then when it kind of fills up it gets pushed off. Just this eviscerator is used to cut the arm off because this gets all filled in. Um, when it gets pushed off though there is uh, I believe it's two additional free blocks fall that we don't want and they fall into the eviscerator and get eviscerated until this can reset these 
uh, welders back into their normal position and it starts making three long bars again. Um, so, <laughs> I'll quickly play this. As you can see, these are all not connected, they're all loose until here. We make three long bars, they get piled up. We get one more, but then we get single blocks, it gets pushed off, then two more single blocks get eviscerated out of the way. And I'll show you from this angle. See these get eviscerated until we can get the, the welder back into position to make three long blocks again. And from there it works very similar to my version except it already has a cutout here so you can save two eviscerators or at least save one eviscerator because you need the one down here to get rid of those extra free blocks that come out uh, because it takes a cycle and you already have a block pass. Um, I'm just going to let one or two of these go in. You can see it's only 12 blocks. Um, I think the footprint is going to be 76 once. Yes, once we get output. Um, it probably takes a similar number of cycles. It may be... It may be a very similar number of cycles because it still does use up the same number of blocks. Although, it, I think they do come out a little slower. So, it may be a few more cycles than what I had with my 13 block version. But still, it's only 12 blocks. Uh, because obviously these platforms don't count in the block. Because they're mostly just empty space anyway. They don't have any interior workings. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, I don't want to finish this because I did not come up with this. So I don't want to have my uh, block score reflect 13. Because, uh, reflect 12. Because I only could come up with a 13 block version. Okay, um, that's it for uh, review time. Uh, let's go on. I did do those <laughs> now because I know this next solution or next puzzle, it's simple. I won't say it's easy. It's it's simple. And it's different. And it's on a very pretty planet here with... I'm assuming those are treetops. Um, <laughs> you'll probably see in the next video why I'm assuming that because we actually... Uh, do deal with a tree that looks very much like that in the next uh, puzzle. Um, let me just fly around here. Um, I don't actually see any failure logs. Um, I actually don't recall there being failure logs for this one. Uh, so that makes sense that I don't see any. Uh, so this is meat product type 57 and um, well I can't read what that says and I don't think there's anyone that can it's written in an alien language I'm not sure that was translated but it's hard to see what that is it's some kind of rodent type thing in a meat package styrofoam tray with Classic wrap over the top of some sort. Uh, this is the meat packing machine. You can see there's a plastic wrap roll there. And, uh, well, we have these three burrows or something. Let's hit play here. Um, and you can see these little guys popping their heads up. Yeah, uh, we have to get these guys out of their burrows and in, into the meat packing machine. A <laughs> uh, little, uh, little grim there, but uh, I guess the aliens got to eat. So uh, we are. I'm not entirely sure what the. Well, not, I, <laughs> I don't know what the most efficient way is. I do know, I've never done it myself, but there was 
a trick that some people were doing that if you use lifters to lift them high enough, um, it would bug out their AI. Because, uh, secret, I don't know, you'll come to find out if you play this. They'll walk around after you push them. And they'll hop off conveyor belts. And they'll walk backwards on the conveyor belt and they'll do all sorts of stuff. Um, so someone figured out that if you lifted them high enough, it kind of broke their AI and they stopped hopping around after that. So you could lift them up high and then bring them back down. And uh, they would cause less of a problem for you. And so you could get them outputted quicker. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm just going to do my basic um, method of dealing with them. It works decently, but basically everyone probably deals with them very similarly. I'm going to make a separate lifter for each, although uh, this is somewhat questionable. Not questionable, but it's not specifically a separate lifter. They're going to be able to jump between the two different conveyor belts. And we put little walls up here so they can't get out and get places we don't want them to be. And then we just put walls here so again they can't get places we don't want them to be. sure what the best way to get them all combined. I'm gonna try that. Uh, this puzzle, as far as I know, is one of the few that you can run again and possibly get a different score. One of the few. It may be the only one, actually. Uh, I think their movements of these creatures are random. Uh, at least somewhat, and so you may get a different pattern of them moving the next time. Um, hmm. You know what? We are gonna do this a little differently. Five. Something like that, and that. downward facing sensors here so these should fire independently um, the only problem is this is higher than lifters lift so what happens is uh, we'll get one two three four five they'll stop there and the next guy coming up as he reaches as his head reaches the feet of the previous one one on top will be able to jump off and out and then fall down and that's that's not efficient so if we do something like that I believe that will stop that for the most part which is what we want <laughs> so we're gonna do one more over here another pusher combination And then we'll just put some platforms down here to hold them in place. And uh, 
Well, that is mostly that. Now we have to separate these guys out into five separate outputs. And... Well, there's a few ways you can do that. I'm going to do it this way. Um, let's put in a uh, bit of conduit here. Another downward facing sensor. And then just conveyor belts. You know, it helps if I put them all in the right position. There we go. I don't think that's the most efficient way of doing this, but that's the way I will be doing this. So, um, let's run this and see how this goes. Now, the hope with these conveyors are we don't get guys, yeah, running into each other and pushing backwards as much. And, you know, this is, as soon as there's room here, they'll get pushed in and hopefully not block other guys. Definitely have them going through here. They get packaged up real nice, and once we get five, we'll split them and send them up into the various outputs. Four, 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 four. Three, 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 three. Two, 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 two. One, 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 one. And we should be done. Okay, wow. I think we did uh, decently. Uh, my footprint is slightly higher than uh, some of my friends here. Block score is higher as well, but uh, cycle score is quite a bit lower. Um, I'm gonna make a few modifications, but uh, I wanna keep this version, so. Oh, hey, uh. uh oh, oh, I've got it, we have visual. Oh, what was that? Now I remember uh, some of the earlier uh, failure logs mentioning seeing a screen, seeing a face in the screen. Is that what they were referring to? Hmm, that was interesting. Okay, um, <laughs> let's work on a copy of that solution. Now, that worked, but and it was pretty quick, which was was nice. But as you saw, we had a higher a higher footprint than some of my friends. So let's uh, see what we can do about that. Okay, that should be a much more direct route. In fact, we could we could get it more direct. Um, let's 
see how this works out. Uh, we need area select from there. Um, well, let's do there. We'll have to move some additional stuff. One, two. Now I need to move this by two. There we go. And the rest we'll just fix by hand. I need to put these in here. That will... It's not going to add footprint or block score. So we, uh, blo they don't count as blocks and we already had a block there for footprint reasons. Put a conveyor belt there. Put that there. That should save us. Since we're not coming out as far, um, that should save us a few blocks. Um, I could bring this over one more, but then we'd hit, like, these wouldn't merge right, so I think that won't re wouldn't really save us anything. So let's, uh, let's put a block here so that doesn't fall, <laughs> and run this again. Now, what I suspect will happen is we'll have a few collisions here, so we won't get as many of these guys up and out, and again, we'll also have collisions here. So it'll be a little slower. But, I think our footprint is already uh, smaller. And our blocks should be less as well. So, uh, getting down here. Two left. One left. And that should be it. Wow, we got 202 again. Was not expecting that. I was actually expecting it to take uh, more. <laughs> there goes my theory about random movement. Um, however, you can see our previous best was 225 footprint. We're now down to 210, which is 10 less. And our block score also dropped quite a bit and, uh, hey, we're now tied with uh, Fireman here. Uh, so, I think that's... Uh, that's going to be it. I don't see a way of really reducing it any further. Well, I could reduce it further. If we could have this go into the same lifter over here. Uh, I'm already <laughs> more time, but um, let's just do this real quick. Get rid of all that. We'll that and um, move you over that over. Let's, uh, let's move all this over. And now we just have to build up a little more. All 
All right, that should be an even smaller footprint. I don't think we can get much smaller than that. But now we are going to have some... This is going to take much longer, I think. Yep. Back here. Definitely does not look as full. See, there's a backup. You can't. You can only get one. How do we? All right, that was 235 cycle score. So that was higher. Of course, it still shows our best here. Now got it down to a hundred and three blocks. Uh, this is a bigger footprint, but I saw there was a loose gopher, or whatever these things are. Um. Where is that coming from? Didn't know pressing the P key shows your total footprint uh, by highlighting basically the tops of anything. That counts towards your footprint. Well, I'm guessing these don't count here until the outputs actually occur. Maybe that's what... Let's just... Alright, we're now down to a 204 footprint. Uh, let's continue to the cell. I just want to run this one. Uh, once more, let's... Let's put two blocks there, and a block there. Just make sure nobody gets out. I want to see if this gets us a 202 again, or if the guy got loose, or... Well, first to see if <laughs> the cycles are the same. And yeah, this does have the bigger footprint, so I don't... Yeah, see, this was 210 now. We just got a a good random roll, I think. You see, we get this upper conveyor belt a lot fuller. Oh, there, look at that, 9194. That is really good. It's 49 faster than Electrolyon. Uh, Alright. This is running a little long, so I think I'm going to end it here. Uh, next time we will be doing Relaxant Formula 13. And uh, continuing on with uh, Infinite Factory. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, next time. Let's, uh, let's have a snack. Color pellets you guys like better. Kind of like the red ones. Mmm.